When I was first learning probability, my teachers tried explaining the concept of guaranteed outcomes via the infinite monkey theorem. Colloquially, this describes the concept of how, if an infinite amount of monkeys were given an infinite amount of time to randomly type letters, they would eventually produce the collective works of Shakespeare. Slightly more technically, Wikipedia states that, quote, any event of events that has a non-zero probability of happening will almost certainly occur an infinite number of times given an infinite amount of time, or a universe that is infinite in size. Yet, Shakespeare's 43 works contain 884,421 words. If each word is around 5 characters long, that's like getting 4 million correct characters in a row. Even if we throw out spacing, capitalization, and punctuation, even typing a word like polymorphia correctly has probability 1 over 26 to the power of 11 for any random collection of 11 letters, where the 26 comes from the fact that each letter has 26 different possibilities, and we want this exact ordering of 11 characters. But I also learned in calculus class that 1 over x to the power of n will converge to zero if x is greater than 1 as n approaches infinity. Even though 4 million isn't close to infinity, what if we were working with a greater value? For example, what if we gave all the monkeys playing cards instead of typewriters and asked them to lay out all possible arrangements of the deck of 52 cards? The value of 52 factorial is around 8 times 10 to the power of 67. For reference, the universe has been existing for around 4 times 10 to the power of 17 seconds, orders of magnitude smaller. Now obviously, 52 factorial isn't infinity either, so for me, it became much easier to just suspend disbelief and move on with my life. Then, very recently, I came across this really cool way to conceptualize these probabilities in terms of expected time. Suppose we've rehired one of the previously aforementioned monkeys. He's given his typewriter again and starts clicking away randomly at the 26 letters. What's the expected amount of time for him to type out the phrase abracadabra? Initially, one might observe that the phrase polymorphia and abracadabra are both 11 characters, so one might mistakenly think that both should still have the same answer of 26 to the power of 11 trials, where each trial is 11 typed letters. Yet, something peculiar about the phrase abracadabra is the concept of durable progress. Suppose our monkey is typing away. Let's say he gets really lucky and types out the letters A, B, R, A, B, R, A, C, A, D, A, B, R, A. We can immediately notice that even though the fifth letter wasn't a C, which would have been the fastest way to type abracadabra, it wasn't like our progress was completely reset. We just reused the A from the fourth letter position. In addition, if we kept going, we'd only need in theory a minimum of seven more slots to finish the word, rather than the full 11, since the last four characters already form the phrase abra. This is the concept I like to call durable progress, where even if the monkey messes up, the act of us sampling 11 random characters from the monkey's stream of gibberish means that an error doesn't necessarily mean that we start from square one like we never typed anything at all. As a result, we can say that while 11 times 26 to the power of 11 is definitely an upper bound for the expected number of keystrokes, the real answer is probably a lot lower. So how can we get the actual value? The strange answer? Gambling. Let me explain. In mathematical theory, there's a strategy called the martingale that lets you go at least always even. Well, emphasis on the part in theory. Suppose Alice is making a bet against some fair third party. She bets a dollar and flips a coin. If the coin lands heads, she gets her initial bet back plus the value of her bet and profit. So in this case, she'd end up with two dollars instead of her initial one dollar. If the coin lands tails, she doesn't get her dollar back at all. We can suppose the coin is fair. Then the martingale strategy goes as follows. Every time Alice bets and loses, her next bet should be double the amount of her previous loss. For instance, if she bets $1 and loses, she should bet $2 on the next coin flip. If she loses again, then she could bet $4, and so on. The idea is that if we keep doubling the bet sizes after each loss, the infinite monkey theorem tells us that it would eventually be guaranteed to hit a heads, meaning Alice would win all of her money back plus the initial bet, i.e. Alice will make back everything plus an additional dollar of profit. Some of you might observe that it seems like Alice's expected value is always positive here. However, this is the segment of the video where I tell you not to start gambling your life savings away. There's a reason this sort of scenario is sometimes called the St. Peter's Paradox or the Gambler's Rune Problem. The reason why you should not run to the casino with your life savings right now is because unlike Alice, the amount of money you own right now, yes, you, is finite. In 99% of scenarios, you're going to run out of money before your doubling down antics run a profit. Also, in pretty much every casino I've heard of, the house edge means you're often going to lose more. Even in a game like Blackjack, if you try to tip the odds back into your favor with card counting, you're probably just going to get kicked out. Anyway, that segment concludes legal and financial advice from me. Now let's get back to talking about why conceptual gambling is really useful. Suppose people see this monkey typing away at a typewriter and start making bets on what the next letter will be. Eventually, a casino opens up next to the monkey, promising fair outcomes. 
outcomes. This means that if someone bet $1 and they are correct, the casino promises to pay them $25 profit and their initial dollar back. If they aren't correct, the casino just pockets the dollar. We can see that the casino is fair based on the definition of expected value. The expected profit for a gambler is then 25 over 26 times minus 1 plus 1 over 26 times 25 which is equal to zero. Suppose in fact that this monkey attracts so much attention trying to type the phrase abracadabra that it becomes a national sensation. Then, before every letter typed, a brand new gambler comes in betting one dollar that the next letter will be an A. If you're trying to question this, maybe just pretend the monkey is typing really slowly or something. If they lose, they lose the dollar that they bet and just go home as they don't want to lose any more money. If they win, suppose they take all of their winnings, including the initial bet, and bet that the next letter will be B. If they win again, they just keep using all the money that they currently possess at the casino to guess the next letter of abracadabra, i.e. R, then A, then C, and so on. This way, if they ever lose, they'll only ever have lost one dollar of their own money. Think of it like the reverse martingale strategy that we just talked about. Note that just because a gambler won, doesn't mean a new one won't come up for the next letter. Let T denote the amount of time that passes until the full phrase abracadabra appears, in units of keystrokes. When this occurs, the casino closes as the monkey spectacle has completed its objective. The owners would certainly want to know how much gross revenue the casino has made, i.e. total amount of money that has entered the casino. We define the fact that every keystroke meant one gambler was putting a dollar into the casino system, so T keystrokes means that the casino made T dollars. If you're wondering about the people who won, note that we're just asking about the overall inflow of cash into the casino. In fact, if those people who did win reinvest into the casino betting system, they're still technically playing with primarily house money besides the initial dollar that was inputted into this web of betting. But obviously, the casino also needs to worry about how much it has to pay out, especially for rare individuals who stayed until the monkey typed out the full phrase. In fact, they're guaranteed to pay out exactly one person who would be making the full 26 to the power of 11 dollars, since that's when the casino's condition to close activates to begin with. The key thing to note here though, is that only one person can be the full possible winner, since we've defined the fact that the people who are betting are staggered by the letter. So is this all then? Well not necessarily. Just because the person who was on the ninth letter must have been sorely disappointed to see an A instead of an R, does not mean that everybody else was. For instance, someone who just entered the casino would be happy, since they made their first bet hoping it was A. It might be tempting to think that everybody else who's next letter was an A would be happy, but we have to remember the fact that we're conditioning on the fact that the word was completed. This means the previous three letters when the word was completed were R, B, and A, from most recent to least recent. So, someone who already had abracad or abra built up already would have left since their three last letters are D, A, C, and A, R, B respectively. Thus, the only other people who get paid out would have built up the string A, B, R and just hit the last A, or concurrently, the luckiest person who had the entire string but A, and lastly, the most most recent person who walked into the casino with no build up on their string at all hit A as well. Thus, the overall payout of the casino in dollars is 26 to the power of 11 plus 26 to the power of 4 plus 26, approximately 3 times 10 to the power of 15, which is 3 quadrillion or 3,000 trillion in English. Now this value might seem astronomically disastrous for our casino. After all, it's a really big number, but something we established at the very start finishes this proof beautifully. Remember, we've explicitly stated that the casino has been giving fair odds the whole time. This means that in the long run, we can safely declare that the casino's expected revenue will equal their expected payouts. Obviously in the short run, this might not be the case. For example, the casino might get absolutely bankrupted if the monkey just types out the 11 characters in the first 11 keystrokes. However, that scenario is so astronomically improbable compared to the much more likely outcomes of trillions of people who will just pay a dollar and end up losing before they get paid out. So back to the original question at hand. What is the expected amount of keystrokes necessary for our monkey to type abracadabra? Remember that the casino closes at time t, which is random, and the casino's expected earnings is t dollars. Furthermore, the casino's expected earnings equals its expected payout, because we declared at the beginning the casino was fair, which means t equals 26 to the power of 11 plus 26 to the power of 4 plus 26, which means the monkey needs around 3 quadrillion keystrokes before we should expect to see abracadabra appear. I was really curious at this point to see what this value actually meant, so I went on the popular typing test website, ironically enough called monkey type, to see how the fastest humans can actually type. This one legend, mythical rocket, currently holds the world record with 304 words per minute adjusted for accuracy. However, the person in third place, Sayrith, actually has a higher raw sustained typing speed at almost 
316 words per minute with slightly less accuracy. Obviously, our monkey doesn't know what accuracy means, so let's use this as our highest benchmark. Assuming that the average English word has 5 characters, this means that Sarah is typing at 316 times 5 over 60, which is 26 characters a second. Hold on, what? How on earth does this person not have carpal tunnel? Even smashing all your fingers on the keyboard twice is only 20 characters, and that's still pretty annoying to do. How are these people sustaining this for 15 seconds straight at a rate of 26 characters per second? Anyway, at this rate, this means our monkey would take 4.5 million years. Wonderful. Well, there's another upload for the channel. I'm back at school now, so videos will probably be a lot harder to upload, but I'll still be grinding out content, so don't worry about the channel going radio silent. Also, a little bit ago I did a poll about what content everybody else wants to see and got this chart. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about strategy games, and my next video should be related to an imperfect information game I grew up playing a lot as a kid, and hopefully many of you will recognize it. Speaking of charts, take a look at this. Literally only like 2% of you who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Now, I'm no casino, but I certainly know a skewed ratio when I see one, and I would love to see you subscribe if you made it this far and enjoy my content. No pressure though, references as usual will be in the description. Thanks for watching, hope to see you next time.